Hi there. This is a conversation for anyone whose first language is not English. So that means 95% of the world's population. If your first language is English, congratulations. Congratulations, because it's easier to talk to many more people around the world. But this video is more focused on the other 95%. And we can all help to change the current situation. I need your help. So right today, I want to talk about Brexit, Trump, emoticons. And that's about it. So uh, Brexit, if you have been sleeping under a rock, is all about the decision by Britain to leave Europe. So exit, the word exit means to leave, and Britain, and add it together, you have Britain and exit, you get Brexit. And so Britain, the small country in a large continent, has said, no, we don't want to have a part of a free trade agreement with you anymore. We want to do our own thing. We want a more control of what we do. We don't want to be told what to do by people in another country. Brexit. Now, before Brexit, all of the main newspapers, uh, they all predicted one thing. They said at least on one side of the of the uh, newspaper spectrum, they said, for sure, nobody would vote for breakfast, Brexit, breakfast. Everybody will vote for breakfast, but these papers thought that not everybody would vote for Brexit. And they were very surprised. And they were very surprised because many, many people didn't talk to the reporters, didn't talk to the to the newspapers before, saying that I want to get out of Europe. And the reporters just listened to what they heard on the street, but they didn't notice that many people felt ashamed. They felt small. They felt stupid. They felt, I don't, can't say what I want to say to this person. This person, this reporter, this journalist is too intelligent for me. Surprise, surprise, on the day, more people voted to leave Europe than to stay in Europe. So, then we have the last election with Trump. He's going to become the new American president. You know this. Before the election, most of the main established newspapers and TV stations and radio stations, the BBC, uh, the, the more global CNN, Fox News was was uh, very often wondering if thinking that Clinton would get in. Yet Trump was voted in with a large majority in many places. Yes, the majority in total, the number of people in total were more for, for Clinton. But in the end, because of the American system, he got a very strong vote or mandate to be the president of the country. The reporters, the journalists, didn't understand this. They didn't hear it. They didn't look at the signs and they didn't get the information. That's their job, to get the information, to report it back to us, to tell us what's going on. And they got it wrong. They just got it wrong. So what is the lesson here? The lesson is that many people who felt stupid or less intelligent or less articulate, that just means that less able to speak, and they just felt, oh, I can't say this to a reporter. I can't say I like Trump. I can't say I like Brexit. I can't say that publicly. And then they went into the voting booth into the box to vote. And in that box, they said, uh, actually, I want Trump or I want Brexit. So what's the message here? The message is that the whole world has an opinion. That's great. But do we, that means people who can more easily speak 
uh, in our own native language or more easily speak in a second language like English, do we give the space and the time for other people to feel comfortable to give their opinion? In one word, we can say, are we inclusive? And we have to ask ourselves, I ask myself, how do I talk that gives another person the chance to speak also? Do I speak in a way that makes the other person feel comfortable to speak? How committed, how ready am I for to be democratic? Democratic is not just in an election. It is also every day. In my conversation with my child, do I give my son, I have a seven-year-old son, do I give my son the chance to speak? Or do I speak too much? Do I speak too fast? Do I give him a chance to, to say what he wants to say? Do I really listen? Do I really listen? So, this is a question. We can practice this. If we say we want democracy, do we give the chance for others to also have a chance to speak? Democracy is from two Greek words. It means the rule of the people. And rule of the people means that other people have a chance to speak. So this becomes very important when we have global online conversations. Do we give a chance to people whose first language is not English? Do we give them a chance to speak? And do the people who don't speak English so well in many online conversations, do we take our place? Do we fight for our place? And so we come to an emoticon. That's what's up on this wall. This is an emoticon. This is a symbol. And it means... Um, when you turn it this way, it means, see the glasses, see the nose, it's a professor. Glasses, professor, intelligent professor, talking too much. When you read something online, you can make this emoticon to show to the other person that you are... Here, you want to understand what the person said, but the person used words in English that is too complicated. Yeah, they didn't write in a simple way. And you can say this and you can say, I'm a clever person, but not in, I can't show this in English, not yet. And so we use this to say to the people, speak, write more simply, speak more simply, use simpler words, and then I can understand. So this is a symbol for globish. I've talked here before about globish. It looks like this again. So you just need an eight. And this symbol, you can find it on the keyboard. It's often top left. It depends on your, what your keyboard comes from, what the first language is. But you will find this. And then over time, people will understand, oh, I have to change the way I speak because I want more people to understand. When we do this, we create a democratic conversation. We create a conversation for everybody. If we don't do this, the countries that can't speak in the global conversation online so easily, they will stop speaking, but they will still find a way to speak. And we hope that people don't speak with guns. We need to give people a chance to speak with words. Then we can find a way to understand each other. Then, over time, we build peace and we don't build a situation that leads to war. Thank you for the time. Please subscribe. You're going to see more and more of these videos over time. Uh, I, um, I look forward to your comments underneath. Thank you so much.